What's up y'all? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video we are going to look at binomial expansion. This is when you've got a binomial and you've got some power and you're needing to multiply these parentheses out more and more and more. Is there a shortcut? Is there a way that we can get to this without having to do all this long drawn out and multiplying? You know it. Let's get to it and figure out what that pattern is. So let's say we've got these uh, different binomials here and you can see we've got one going to the first power, the second power, the third power, and the fourth power. Uh, let's expand these out and see what happens as we start working through this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to do uh, a plus b to the first power. Well, that is just a plus b. That's pretty straightforward. Now, what about a plus b squared? Now, we've done this in our quadratics videos, and what that means is you've got to take this, you've got to take this, and multiply the parentheses two times. Remember the exponent isn't distributable inside there. A, a plus b squared does not equal a squared plus b squared. It just doesn't work like that, remember. So you've got to take the parentheses and you've got to multiply them to, together. So then what we'll do is we'll take a times a and we're going to get a squared. We'll do a times b. We'll get a b b times a, which is the same thing as a b, and b times b, which is b squared. Now, we typically combine all of our like terms with this, so that will give us a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now, what about a plus b cubed? Well, that means we're going to take three parentheses and multiply them out. But you know what? We already know what two parentheses are. We did that right up here. So we don't need to do that again. So we've got a plus b times two more of these things, which is the same thing as this right here. So we're going to take the a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and we're going to multiply those together. So a times a, where we've got a squared, and then we're going to take a times 2ab. So we've got 2a squared b, and then we're going to take a, we're going to multiply it by b squared. So now we've got uh, a b squared, and now we've got to do the same thing with our b. We've got to do it times a, times 2ab, and times b squared. So we're going to have a squared b plus 2ab squared plus b cubed. So now let's simplify our like terms again. So we're going to have a cubed, whoop. I made a mistake back up here. This is supposed to be a cubed. So we're going to have a cubed plus, let's see, we've got 2a squared b. Here's another a squared b. So we've got 3a squared b's. We have 3ab squareds. And we've got 1b cubed. All right, now finally, for the last one, we've got a plus b to the fourth power. So we are going to, again, we're going to ultimately be multiplying all four of these things out. And we know that this is all the same as these three things here. So we'll just take a plus b and we'll multiply it by that line above. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to work with all the arrows because you know what I'm going to do here. And I'm just going to say a times a cubed is a to the fourth. We've got a times 3a squared b, so that's 3a cubed b, plus 3a squared b squared, plus a b cubed, and now we're going to take our b and we're going to multiply it across everything. So we got a cubed b plus 3a squared b squared, plus 3a b cubed, plus b to the fourth. Whew. So now we got to simplify all this. We're getting to a point. Stick with me. So we've got a to the fourth plus uh, how many a cubed b's do we have? We've got four of those, four a cubed b's. And then we've got, uh, let's see, six a squared, six a squared b squareds. We've got four a b cubes, and then we have one b to the fourth. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this, I'm going to summarize it down below since we've done all of our working and we're going to look at to see if we can see any patterns that's developing as we're multiplying all these things out. 
All right, so I've got everything summarized down here. Now I'm gonna fill in a few terms, uh, a few numbers that we don't normally write with this, just so we can, again, see the pattern develop. So typically we don't write uh, the coefficient of one in here, but I'm gonna do that for all these terms that have just one variable in it. One of the things you might notice is that these numbers that I just filled in, they actually have their own pattern to them. And this pattern, if I, if I were to write this out, this pattern goes from 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. This pattern here, this thing is called Pascal's Triangle. And Pascal's Triangle is a pattern that's been studied. There's so many really cool things that are happening inside there. But really what's ultimately happening is you are adding the two numbers above it to get to the number below. So if we look at all of these, if I've got one times uh, one plus one, I get two, one plus two, I get three, one plus three, I get four, three plus three, I get six, and so on. Now I'm gonna work through Pascal's triangle in another video, so you can check that out here, um, and I'll have it linked below, but I'll go into a little bit more depth about what Pascal's triangle does for us in terms of binomial expansions and in terms of counting and numbers in general. So the first thing we notice is that the coefficients are all multiplied by Pascal's triangle. Uh, another thing you might notice is that the highest degree in any of these matches up with this right here. So here we've got, uh, this is the first power over here, this is second power, third power, fourth power. So all of these things, the highest power, the highest degree in our expansion matches the power that we are multiplying. So the highest degree in our expansion matches the power of the binomial. Now here's another thing that I didn't write but I'm gonna fill in here. Um, a lot of these things you might also notice that something's happening with our a's. Here we got a to the third, here we got a squared, here we got a to the first, and we can even expand this out a little bit further and we could put a to the zero in here and what we might see is that our a powers are going from one to zero, two, one, zero, three, two, one, zero, and so on. So the powers of a, the power of a decreases by one for each term, and that's as we're moving left to right. And then again, if I fill in some of these, if I put in b to the zero power with this, you'll notice that B goes up, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Or sometimes people say it decreases going from the right, but the power of B increases by one for each term, and we'll say that for left to right, or if you prefer, you can say decreases by one from right to left. Sometimes I think of it going this way. I think the B term's going this way and I think the A term's going this way. So if you think about the B term's decreasing as you go or if you think about the B term's increasing as you go, it doesn't matter which way you write it as long as you know that, the, that this thing is matching and they're going in opposite directions. The last thing I like to point out in this is that you'll also notice that the, the sum of all of your exponents always add up to this same power as well. So you can see here it's three and one, which is four, two and two, which is four, and so on. So the sum of the powers of the terms in the expansion add up to the power of the binomial. Now at IB, you're often gonna have to do some kind of expanding of binomials. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna know how, do I, how can I do this really quickly? And we're gonna look at that in our next video, but before you leave, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.